Well, as we know, business makes the world go around. There's one thing to create a business, but it's another to create an empire. You want to learn how to do that? Right here, right now on the Scale or Fail show. Welcome to the Scale or Fail show. I am your host, Allison Maslin. I'm also your business mentor and founder of Pinnacle Global Network. I am so excited to air this show today because I love highlighting incredible business leaders out there making things happen and making the world a better place for you. So Elena Cardone started her career in Hollywood and soon became a successful actress and model of TV and film fame. Now an author, businesswoman, public speaker, empire builder, and visionary, Elena currently hosts her own show, Women in Power, and co-hosts the G&E show with her husband, Grant Cardone, best-selling author, entrepreneur, and real estate investor. Together, they've created a real estate portfolio of almost $1 billion, and the queen of her empire, Elena, has inspired a legion of followers to create their own empires, and I want to get into that today. Um, and really helping them to create truly fulfilling lives beyond the average. She counts her current job as her most important one, which is the chief family officer, where, where she's balancing it all. And I want to hear about that too, where she's a loving mother, fierce wife, and loyal friend. So Elena, thank you so much for being with us today. Absolutely. Thanks for having me. And what a wonderful introduction. Thank you. Yeah, well, gosh, you have uh, you have so much to share. Uh, I know your journey has been, you know, a wild ride, and now you're out there making a big difference in the world. So, can you just share for those that that don't know you, um, what is you know, share some of the journey leading up to where you are now? Well, I grew up, I was born in Spain, in Madrid, but I only lived there for a year. My parents were working in the American embassy over there. So I was born an American citizen on Spanish soil, but then I was reared in New Orleans, Louisiana. And, um, you know, it was, I had a, a really good, sane childhood up until I was 14. And then when I was 14, I witnessed my best friend per and her mother perish in a fire in a house that was across the street from ours. And that experience at that age was very difficult for me to confront. And so I went down a sort of a very dark and downward spiral for many years. But I was able to claw my way out of that uh, cave and, and, and I've really figured out how to now turn liabilities into assets. And now I've actually even evolved even further. I met my husband previous to that. I was thought I had to be this independent, do everything on my own powerful woman. Um, ironically, I met my husband and in the challenges of being married and having to depend on somebody else and be a real team member, I was able to actually find even more strength and power and independence as a woman, but it came through the challenges and the victories and everything having to do with being with a man. And we were able to fortify, come together as a team and as a couple know our roles, not based on male, female, but on strengths and weaknesses. And we were able to achieve heightened levels of success together as a couple. So I've really evolved as a woman, as a wife, as a mother. And I now have the statistics behind me to be able to impart some knowledge on others with the purpose of fast tracking their way to success. So that's where oh, I am wow. now. That's, that's sort of what I've been through and what's led me to the journey that I'm on now. Wow. I want to dive into all of that um, because there, there's so much there. And, 
I, I can't even imagine that trauma at 14. Well, at any age, right? That would be traumatic for anyone. But at that age is such, you know, a vulnerable time also. Um, so gosh, that, that sounds incredibly challenging. And so did you, how long have you been married to you and Grant? How long have you two been this, together? This fourth of July will be 16 years. So we've been oh. married 15, but very soon 16. Wow. That's a, an accomplishment in its, itself. Uh, it is. It really is. And so, uh, did you, when you were first together, did you decide you wanted to be in business together or was that an involvement? That was an involvement. Um, we were married in 2004. I was an actress uh, in LA. I did well for myself. I had bought a house. I had had hot rods. I never had the level of success that Grant has. Um, clearly that's his strength. Uh, but when 2008 happened, I was pregnant with my first child, our first child, the economy collapsed. There was clearly no jobs for any pregnant actresses then. It made it a little more difficult. And so I was really forced to confront some things. I was really forced to confront, do I want to continue doing my own thing or do I want to trade in my thing in order to trade up and really throw everything that I have behind my husband, who also had a big ginormous sucker punch in 2008 with his business, because it was, as he knew it, over. We were also under a lawsuit for the first time for multi-millions of dollars. It was a really devastating time, but it did lead us to the opportunity to really be able to come together and really build what he had going in terms of his content and his career and where he and we could go together as a couple. So I was willing to trade that in back then, which was very scary for me. Uh, because we didn't have the empire of what it looks like today. So, um, but I, I, I made a gamble and fortunately it paid off, but it was, yeah. it wasn't easy to say the least, but it turned out to be the best thing that I could have done. But no, we were not always, oh, we're going to go into business together. It was, we're either going to sink or swim and we can't be divided right now. Although we do divide and conquer with our roles and to get things done at that time, we needed to not divide and conquer. We needed to come together and fortify and fight on the same team in order to survive. Yeah. Wow. I love that. You know, it's so interesting in tough times and those challenges uh, can also create some you know, beautiful opportunities on the other side that wouldn't have hap happened otherwise you know, even now. So, you know, I mean, and you're no stranger to adversity, like what you shared earlier. Um, and you've, you've faced quite a few challenges. What do you think, Elena, is inside of you that gets you through those tough times? Just that the quality within you. It's um, that I'm deeply connected to my purpose and I'm crazy enough to believe that maybe I could achieve it. And that's really all it is, is that I have a, a, a very big connection to my purpose and to who I am. And like I said, I've, through the adversity, I had to climb out of the muck. Um, and, and that takes an enormous amount of discipline and courage and and whatever that takes to achieve it's 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 not for the faint of heart so you know because i'm connected to the the purpose it's what keeps me going and inspired and motivated and disciplined enough to 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 continue in the journey you know i want to help yeah. people I, it's my desire you know um at 14 when it was just my father and me and a couple of other neighborhood guys trying to put out the fire with the hose, you know, and failing in the buckets of water. I failed to help. I failed to help my friend. 
I don't need to beat myself up over it, but I failed to help. So, you know, I turned that liability of failing to help a friend, because that's really what it was at the end of the day. I failed to help. She died. Her mother died. But I can use that as the purpose that drives me for the rest of my life, whether I'm consciously thinking about Goldie, that was her name of what happened at 14. I just discovered how to use that and turn it into my ability to want to help, which is I want to help. I want to make a difference. I don't want to fail in my help. I want to help restore the value of women in society. I want to restore the opinion of the family and the family dynamic and relationships you know oftentimes i feel like i'm failing but it's what keeps me motivated and trying and willing to keep in and digging in and forging forward it's because i've met myself i continue to meet myself every single day and you know it's not about being perfect it's not about having it all it's about meeting yourself and continuing in the face of defeat in the face of ugliness in the face of betrayal in the face of failure being able to meet yourself and continuing and and that's where you find your greatness and that's where you find your insanity to think that just maybe one day you can get there yeah wow that is so beautiful and so powerful and you can really tell that you are so connected to that purpose that that really drives you um, and that, uh, you know, you're with that Goldie in a sense is with you along yeah. the way here, um, yeah. as, as part of that purpose. So you, I, I, I love everything you're saying. You're totally lighting me up. This is exactly, um, how I love to look at the world and, um, you know, it's the things that, that fire me up. You talk about building an empire. So I want to just dive into that a little bit on you know, how has that as a goal changed you and the way you run your business? And, and by empire, can you define that? Yeah, I define um, an empire as an operating system which sets your goals, your values, your purposes at such a high level and uh, in which to conduct the everyday living of your life. And an empire is a structured uh, plan. It's a, it's a structured means. It's got order. It's got hierarchy. It's got, it's got expansion. It includes people. It's not solopreneur. It's not, I, I, I believe that's been sold and is not true. No one's ever built an empire alone. It may have started in the garage. It doesn't stay in the garage. It builds, it becomes an empire. So it, it entails all of those things. But the reason you need an empire and to think so big and on such massive terms in terms of abundance is because the more abundance that you have and not just money, although you do need money, we live on an economic planet, but abundance of courage, abundance of integrity, abundance of everything is because that's the only thing that ensures your survival. It's the only thing that can withstand a hit. So a farmer that would need 12 crops to live off of in a year would be making a critical mistake by only planting 12 crops yeah. because he's going to have the winter come in or the crickets or the bugs and it's going to wipe out half of his crop and he's going to be starving. So the farmer that would be smart to plan 100, 200, 400, 1,000 crops and only need 12, can then take care of his family, his community, the guy that sells him the tractors, the, you know, on to the next town and so on because he thought in scale and massive terms and was willing to take the responsibility uh, to, to plant even though his neighbors may have said, why does he need so much? And why does, who does he think he is? And why isn't he satisfied with enough is enough? And he's so greedy, he wants a thousand and he only needs 12. In spite of all of that, he knew what he needed to do in order to be responsible for his community and for the world. So that's why an empire, because it's responsible. Because yeah. it's your duty to, I love to that. be able 
to take care of yourself and your family and your friends and your loved ones and your community. I love that. And I love that analogy. Um, and so what you're really saying is you're helping people to step out in a much higher version of themselves to grow something much bigger so that you can make a bigger impact. Um, but also diversifying too, when you think of, of the, the farmer, right? Well, what if one of those crops doesn't make it, you know, and so that they have, you know, they have that distribution there. And I think that's just smart, uh, smart business. Me too. And that's how we, we run our operations and, you know, um, you know, and even being a business owner, even, you know, making the decisions to scale back when, when all eyeballs are on you, uh, like now, even sometimes we have to temporarily shrink back or cut back in order to protect the crop or the assets that we do have in order to reboot, in order to regain energy, in order to then go out and expand again. So sometimes it's not easy being a leader or a business owner because a lot of people not in your shoes and don't understand the vision are, or not running a business themselves, it's easy for them to sit back and to be critical or to make a judgment. Oh, you're the, you're the rich guy. How could you lay off people during the pandemic? And, you know, oh, the rich get richer. And, and even just being steadfast into your core values, into who you are and wanting to make a difference for the better and, and not being plagued or stopped or stymied by people that want to hold you back and, and set you back but being able to forge forward and continue to be transparent at all times in order to make a difference and to help other people understand what it really is here, what it really takes here and, um, and having the courage to do so. So that's why we always will keep the curtains open even through difficult times because I do think it's important that people see transparency, authenticity, the realness, the struggles, the pains that we suffer, um, just like everybody else. And also being willing to do the, make the difficult calls um, in order to protect the, the, the greater group of all in the future. Yeah, I, I love that you're sharing this because I think that anytime someone forges out to do something different or do something bigger, um, you're always going to have the people that say, oh, it's not going to work or who do they think they are and so forth. And I, I think that's tough, especially for women to take it. So how do you deal with that, that criticism, you know, that comes your way? Um, it's difficult. Sometimes I cry. Sometimes I hold it back and try not to cry. Um, but ultimately I realize that, you know, when you have a purpose to raise the value of women in society, that I have to do even more and I have to build my network and I have to meet people like you and other powerful women and continue to put out more content and do more in the face of wanting to shrink, withdraw, feel the hit, feel the blows, um, and just continue to find ways to make myself an asset, to become stronger, to be tough enough to take it, um, to be classy enough to educate someone that comes along that has an intention to invalidate me, but to educate them on perhaps a better way of doing things or communicating so that they can be more efficient going forward, especially in dealing with women and some of the things that we go through. So yeah. that's how I do it. I, I understand that it's not gonna change unless I make a change and continue to even grow and to be bigger and push myself continuously. Yeah, well, I think what it does to Elena is it, it shows people, oh, it's possible. You know, anytime you've got a woman, a leader standing up and it's just opening the door to say, look, this is what I've done. This is what you can do too. 
Um, but you've had to, I'm sure, overcome some limiting beliefs to, you know, to make these amazing strides. What have been some of the ones that stand out the most that you've had to really work on? Um, I mean, several. I mean, in terms of my relationship, I had to work on what I told you about earlier. Um, I used to think all men hold me back and, and that relationships held me back. I had to just be open to the fact that maybe a relationship could lift me up and make me stronger. I had to overcome the thoughts that I had about money. I grew up kind of punk rock as, um, as I wrote about in the book. Um, so I had sort of a Robin Hood mentality, steal from the rich, give to the poor. I was resentful about money. I had to look at that I thought money made me greedy or made me one of those people and not cool anymore. So I've had to change my viewpoint and perception about money and really adopt a different viewpoint, which is money could actually make me contribute more, could make me more generous, help more, be on a bigger platform, have more exposure to do good be more philanthropic. So I've had to just invert a lot of ideas about money, about my business in, um, you know, my own thing that I'm kind of doing now, which is my 10X ladies group and this whole platform. I want to bring all these ladies into the Cardone Enterprises network. That's the end goal with 10X ladies. But I'm doing this whole project, this 10X ladies thing, sort of on, on my own right now. I certainly have grant support, but he's also running the 15 companies that now we've now acquired and built. So, you know, so I kind of feel, even though I'm supported, I do feel a little bit alone here trying to, so I'm, I'm currently grappling with, is this a wise move? Is this stupid? Is anyone even going to be interested? Am I going to be able to do this? What is the point? I could be doing Cardone Capital real estate where I know I would be a success. So I'm, I'm challenged with the same things right now. Um, trying to trying to do my own sort of avenue with these with this women's group that I'm doing. Yeah. Well, I love that. And thank you for being so vulnerable and sharing because I think a lot of, you know, you're a beautiful woman, you're smart, you know, you've had a lot of success. And I think sometimes people will look at someone like you and say, "Oh, it's easy." You know, it's been e it's easy for you, yeah. but you know, yeah. and a lot of those money beliefs, I think those are huge because so many people have grown up with these, you know, real uh, negative ideas around money. So they get out there trying to do all the right things, but it's that inner thinking that holds them back. That's right. And if you think money is the root of all evil, stereotypical one, but if you think money is the root of all evil, then you, you have to realize and ste step outside of yourself and look at your life that every time you started to do well, something came in to knock you down. You'll never be able to cross what you think is wealth or a lot of money because you're a good person and no one wants to be evil. So if you have those thoughts, no matter how much you train or how much you educate yourself, if you actually have that belief, you will never allow yourself to, to break that ceiling for yourself because it's ingrained in you. So the first thing I do when I'm trying to break a, a fixed idea that I have is just being open to the possibility of a different version or a different side. Like when I first set the one that all relationships don't hold you back and all men don't hold you back, literally at the time that I had the cognition that I even thought that in the first place. Um, but then I had looked at the, every relationship that I had been in and they all held me back. I made myself right about that. Like they really did do that. But when I looked at that and I realized that's what I was doing, they were just characters playing out in my movie that I cast called My Life when I made the, the idea that, okay, maybe there can be a relationship that actually builds me up and makes me 
reach heightened levels of success that I couldn't achieve on my own. Like I could do what I could do on my own and then they could lift, push me up higher. Like that thought was so unreal to me at that time. I literally had to just say, I'm open to the idea that maybe that could exist because it wasn't real to me at that time. So anytime I'm trying to change my thinking or change my idea, I don't go, I believe in hamada, 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 and this is <laughs> because I say it is like, that doesn't work for me. I just have to be real with what, what really is real for me at the time. And I just try to be open to the idea of something else. And then I gradually can adopt it and live into it and keep breaking the mold and more and more and more having this can come into the area um, of what I was trying to, to, to fix. Yeah. Wow. That, that is, you know, it really does start with the awareness first to say, you know, see, Hmm, wow. How did I get here? And what's my part in it? Yes. Um, They're taking you know, the responsibility. Like you take, you're not the victim. When I decided to stop being a victim of all the things that were happening to me and look at, well, what is my part in creating that? Then when you can take any sort of responsibility, you can then change the out outcome because you're no longer the victim. You're the creator. Oh, it, it's so empowering. And I think sometimes people feel like if I stop blaming, I'm letting that person or situation off the hook. But really what you're doing is giving yourself wings and power to say, okay, I got myself in here. I can choose otherwise. Right. You that know? is true. Yeah. Yeah, I, I remember having the aha moment when I was like, I, I was good at business. I was terrible at relationships. I just kept choosing relationships that would prove to me that I would be abandoned. You know, that was right. my story. And I remember just mm -hmm. sitting in, in a situation once just in pain. And I had this aha, like, Allison, you are so ridiculous. You're sitting here. Why are you choosing to sit here? It was an amazing, it was just this, I, it, this wake up call from, from wherever and that I could actually get up and walk away and choose otherwise. And so it, it, it does start with that awareness, but thanks for sharing that. And so this idea of being an independent woman and that, um, you know, because I, I, I think that there seems to be, well, there's power in that independence but you also say it can kind of hurt the success of your business. What is, what's your thinking behind yeah, that? Yeah, it hurts, it hurts. It's a delicate subject because it all depends on how you view it. But the independence, if you're using your independence as an individuation and a break off and a keeping separate, then you're cutting your nose off to spite your own face because two is more powerful than one all day long, as long as that you're not like working against each other. And sometimes that independence, that individuation thing does act as a work against. It separates, it individuates, it doesn't include. So I'm saying the more that Grant and I were able to depend on each other um, for whatever, to do the role in the relationship, it's like, you know, the Clydesdale's horses, two of them together, one of them by himself can pull 8,000 pounds, Two harness side by side can pull 24,000 pounds, but two of them side by side that have been trained to work in a coordinated effort together can pull like 42,000 pounds. It's a ridiculous wow. amount of numbers. It's ridiculous. Those Clydesdales, the big worker horses. Oh, they're gorgeous. So that's how I feel about relationships. It's if you can work together in a coordinated effort, not I'm Miss Independent, I don't need him, I can do it on my own, then you're fighting each other. But hey, I depend on you, you're gonna do this, 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 and this in the relationship, I'm gonna do this, 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 and this in the relationship, and we're gonna pull. And then all of a sudden, you reach heightened levels of success so much easier because you were able to give up that independence, but not really, I'm, not, I'm never gonna tell someone, to give up on who you are because you have to fulfill your own goals. Like you, you can't give up on your own goals and dreams because if you do that, then you're for sure giving up on your husband and your children and everything else. So I'm not saying lose your independence and your self-worth and your dreams and give it all away to 
become some servient in a relationship. I'll, I'll never say that, but I'm talking about the independence that leads you to individuate and not be strong and work as a coordinated uh, effort with a partner, you know, and that could also not necessarily mean in a relationship, but also in business, like any sort of relationship, like who does what and how do we work with each other to achieve the mission, the goal, the product, instead of fighting each other, because I'm trying to be the boss of this, you're trying to be the boss of that, I'm vying for power and struggle. So we end up fighting each other rather than fighting for each other, driving uh, the mission forward. So it helps when you just get really clear on who does what and be willing to depend on each other to fulfill their duties and obligations so that y'all can achieve greater success together. Yeah, it's kind of like interdependence in a yeah, sense. Yeah, that's you know? one. It's like, because you, you want to keep your independence as far as your identity, your strengths, your, you know, whatever, your special characteristics and gifts. And, uh, hey, Grant. Um, <laughs> I know. Yeah, so uh, it's been great connecting with both of you. Um, so, so I love that. And at the same time, and, and this really applies not just to husband and wife, but partners in business too, to be able to keep your, your strengths and, you know, be the real you, uh, but not, and, and work together, the strength together. And then yeah, both, well, both well, have like, your own. You're right. Like in, in a business relationship, figure out who's, who's got the strengths and the weaknesses and you got to be honest and real about it. It's not an ego thing. The mission should be, Hey, uh, we want to blah, blah, blah. And so that should be an agreed upon mission between the two people and in, in business. Okay. So how are we going to get there? Well, you're really great at social media and marketing and hiring and firing. And I'm actually terrible at the finances, but you're really good at finances and investments and securing allies. So you're going to get to be the boss of all those areas and you're going to get to be the boss of all of those areas. And I'm going to trust you. And even if you make a mistake, you're going to have to correct it, but I'm still going to back you no matter what. And in this area, you're still going to back me no matter what and understand that little mistakes could be made along the way as we're figuring this thing out. But if we each stay in our own lane for the greater good of the greater cause of the mission, then we're not trying to constantly fight. And this person's not trying to come over here and say, why did you do that marketing? That's terrible. And you should do this. And, you know, stopping the other person when we're supposed to be going forward, you know, forward you trust them enough to do their job because you're partners and that's why you became partners so you know let the person have the freedom to be the boss of their area and for the greater good of the goal and that's with anyone not just husband wife but business relationships and any relationship friendships whatever yeah yeah i love that that just so much wisdom and what you just shared Thank you for that. You know, my husband joined, he had his own company for 30 years and he joined, uh, which is now our company last January. And it took us a little while, you know, because I was like railroading meetings because I was used to leading them. <laughs> and, and because of that, I was missing out on all the things that he could share. So it was, it's definitely like took us some time to get into our rhythm yeah. Uh, did it take you all some time too to to figure out that those, you know, what million you're just percent, million percent. The first um, four years, five years of our marriage was constant viability for um, power. You know, who does what? Who's this? Who's that? I'm not going to be made to feel this, that, and therefore we never, um, you know, we had the the surface we thought money and comfort and you know but but then 2008 happened and then we got slapped with the truth that normal doesn't survive only abundance survives so that's when we had to restructure and say hey this no longer works to be fighting each other 
We've got bigger enemies and bigger problems out there. We got to come together, have each other's back. I'm fighting this side, you're fighting that side. And let's make a plan to, to get out of here and never be in this situation again. So, so yes, I have been in those shoes before and it does take time and it does take conversations and figuring out who is strong at what and who is weak at what and how do I have Grant's back when he's weak in this area and how does he have my back when I'm weak in that area and um, how to keep the ego out of it and the temptation to, you know, be alpha. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? Yeah. But when, oh, when yes. You have, <laughs> when you have the purpose very clearly delineated and you understand the rewards and what you're each working for, you can focus on that. And that's what gets you through it. That's what gets you to stop having the little petty fights and the discretions and, you know, like uh, discrepancies. I don't mean discretions, but discrepancies and all the stuff that you can go out and build all day long. And then you come home and you're tearing it down and you wonder why you're not making any advances or getting anywhere and why everything seems so hard. So, yeah. you know, we really had to just figure it out for the greater good to say, okay, this is our areas. This is what we do because we can't survive the tearing each other down and what the economy is doing to us and what the lawsuit is doing to us and what the pregnancy is doing to us and, and, and on and on and on. Like we, we, it was sink or swim for us. It was like, we're either going to survive or, or we're not. What's it going to be? So, yeah, so yeah. it really is that vision and both on board with the vision and everything that's going on right now, you know, crazy time in the world, unprecedented times. Uh, and I know you all just opened, just opened your offices back up. Um, what do you think has been the biggest aha for you or a reminder or a lesson just going through this COVID-19 thing? It's... Um... You know, it's that the, that it never stops. It, there's never a time for a break. Um, you, the aha moment is just sort of accepting it and seeing the isness of the situation, the way that it is and what it could be, and then walking the steps back into present time from that vision and saying, what do I have to do? What are the steps that I have to do? I thought, wow, I finally made it. Grant and I are about to have our big break. We just had 10X Growth Con 4. It was the biggest, it was the best. We had this secret project in the mission that was just gonna explode. It was like, now I can relax. So my biggest aha moment is that, you know, um, that <laughs> merrily, 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 merrily life is, it's not a dream, it's not a fairy tale. If you want a fairy tale, you have to create it and you have to continually create it. You don't just uh, hit a point and then arrive and that's it. It's a continuous thing. So accepting it, figuring out what you have to do to become better on the other side of it, rekindle with your purpose, continue to have conversations to make sure everyone's on the same page. Everyone has to be reminded over and over and over again because they're distracted by COVID and the news and the politics and sicknesses and shutdown and finances and all the million things that are pulling them away from forgetting what the main goal is. So my big aha moment is, is that I know how to turn every liability into an asset and that's what I have to do. And, um, you know, and I, I never want to say it's 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 never not going to be easy because that's way too depressing. But um, but it's 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 always going to take work. And if you want to win the Super Bowl ring, if you want to win the gold medal in the Olympics, um, you won't find one person that said it was easy. So I, I'm an acceptance. I'm an acceptance, and I put my head down, and I'm going to continue to do what I have to do to to be an inspiration, to be great, to be a leader, to, to even say that, you know, society has it so conditioned that even if you say that you're so, Oh, who does she think she is? You know, but yeah. you know who I think I am is I think I have a potential for a lot of greatness, whether people like it or not. And I haven't tapped into it nearly enough. And, um, uh, and I'm crazy enough to attempt to do it. So, so. Yeah. Well, you're doing an incredible job and you are an inspiration 
to so many, truly. Um, and so thank you for sharing that. I love the word isness. Yeah. Isness. It is what the it is. is it, what is the situation? What is the isness of the situation? Yes, I'm glad yeah. you want to me. I make up words from time to time. Yeah, I say life is lifey. I life love is, that. Life, life is, is lifey. lifey. I, love, <laughs> I get it. Yeah, it so is. Well, listen. Um, so you have some things that are happening right now. You know, your next big move for your empire. You were sharing with a, a women's ten x. Why don't you share a little about about that? Your book. Anything else you have going on? Okay. Well, the biggest thing that's uh, you know motivating me is I have put together a group of 10X ladies. It's called 10xladies.com forward slash network. If you wanna join, it's free. So every Wednesday night, uh, I am connecting with women across the globe and strategizing on how to become bigger, better, stronger, more unstoppable on the other side of this as we navigate our way through this. And I've built up a really strong, powerful, community of like-minded women that has been so crucial for me at this time. So that's the big thing I'm, I'm pushing and I would encourage and appreciate the support of all women that are interested in that to go to 10xladies.com forward slash network. Um, if you like what I've said, this book I've written, it's called Build an Empire, How to Have It All. You can go to elenacardone.com forward slash empire or you can just visit my, my website, elenacardone.com and see everything that I'm doing. I have a podcast, Women in Power. I'd love to have you on. And like, like you said that. earlier, I did the G&E show. All of my content is there and available um, to be consumed, to, to hopefully make a difference and fast track someone else's way to success. If in any way that I can ease the transition or to inspire or encourage, then it's my duty to do so. And, and I'm honored that I could even contribute to anyone in any way that, but that's what I, that's what I'm, that's my, that's my purpose. That's what I'm going for. Well, you're doing it. You're doing it full out, probably bigger than 10 X, like a thousand X. Um, so thanks for that. Thank and if you're listening to that, definitely check out her network. We'll put the link there, uh, get her book, um, check out her site, social media, all this stuff. Elena Cardone, this has been so fun. Thank you for being here with me today, especially with everything oh, that's man. going on. You guys just opened your offices. I'm sure it's a little bit crazy, uh, it's, but it's crazy, but it's good. Yeah. Well, thank you so much. And thank you, everybody, for joining us on the Scale or Fail show. And definitely subscribe, iTunes, Spotify, wherever podcasts are. And until next time, get out there and elevate yourself because you are worth it. From my experience, business owners think way too small. In this disruptive marketplace, you have to stay innovative or you won't be here anymore. Business is not easy, but you don't have to do it alone anymore. We take you by the hand every step of the way so that you can finally take those hopes and those dreams and make them a reality. I'm Allison Maslin. I am the founder and CEO of Pinnacle Global Network. We guide and empower business owners around the globe to grow and scale companies that change the world. Pinnacle Global Network is a private mentoring and mastermind network where our business owner clients are partnered with the CEO for private mentoring and small group masterminds, the most amazing live events and a vibrant community of supportive entrepreneurs. In Pinnacle, we work with business owners that are at the six, seven, or eight figure level. They're established business owners that have been running their companies five, 10, 20, or more years. And they're either stuck at the same level and they just can't get beyond that, or they've been on a great trajectory, but they want a much bigger leap. 
So my father was my biggest inspiration, and he built the largest chain of women's clothing stores from 1955 to the early 80s. And he had such a passion for his work, and that really rubbed off on me. I started my first business when I was 19 and have built 10 companies over the last three decades. And so now in Pinnacle Global Network, I take that wisdom and experience for all those years in business, and I get to pay it forward with my team to help our clients clients really grow and thrive. We have an amazing team at Pinnacle Global Network and it all stems from Allison. Her core values, her vision, her mission in life and she really has attracted like-minded individuals who have the same vision and mission for our clients. The team are a bunch of rock stars. These are some of the most talented, diverse, exciting, experienced people you'll ever meet. They have all grown multi-million dollar businesses and they all really, really care about the client's success. We know what it's like to start a business. We know what it's like to grow a business. We know what it's like to scale a business. We've been there. We know the ups and downs. We've made a ton of mistakes and we now get to share the benefit of our experiences with all of our clients. What clients who work with us can expect is to get all of us. We bring 100% of our heart, our head, our knowledge, our experience, our team to what someone's going to solve. There's a lot of support out there for the startup business owner. So we really focus on the established business owner because something happens, like you get traction in your business and all of a sudden you are the forgotten entrepreneur. Business owners work really hard and they get overwhelmed, they get exhausted. And the truth is, is that if you're the one that is delivering your product or service, your business cannot scale. And so we help our clients build a team managed company. So they're actually able to leave for a good period of time and the business continues to thrive. We work our scale it method and help them figure out their multiplier so they can replicate themselves and their offering and their business actually multiplies in profits and the number of people that they impact. The Pinnacle community is just an incredible tribe of business owners that get together and speak the same language. Having people that are on the same path as you is so incredibly important and so powerful. It, it's a big part of our program. When you come in as a business owner, growing a business or scaling a business, it gets lonely at the top. And this is an environment that you are never alone. We become your advisory board. We actually will stand behind you. So when you take a step forward, guess what we do? We take a step forward so you can't go back. And so it's not just about business, it's about helping you be the best version of yourself. So for businesses to really scale, the business owner has to move away from being a boss where they're micromanaging and telling people what to do and basically then they have no life to shifting into being a leader where they're empowering their team to stand up and take ownership so that they can take it and run with it and the business owner actually then gets their life back. And transformation is not an option when it comes to entrepreneurship. Transformation is required. As you grow your business, you get to a new level and you have to transform. As a person, as an organization, we're set apart because we help people transform. And that's probably our greatest uh, challenge and our greatest strength. Success is not created in a silo. Smart business owners know that if you want to get to the top, you have to work with someone that's been there, that's done it, that walks their talk. And so that you have this geoforce behind you and you get there in the fraction of the time. Having a coach is not just a luxury. It is one of the most important things that you can do to grow your business.